Hi everyone, Dr. Hanisha here, and I want to thank you all so much for joining me on my new podcast, Mahan Health with Dr. Hanisha. So what does Mahan Health mean? Well, Mahan in Sanskrit literally translates to great, and to me, it makes no sense but to have the absolute best when it comes to your health. So this podcast is all about how you can achieve Mahan or great health. On this podcast, I'm going to have guests from all different backgrounds, a variety of specialties, all experts in natural medicine. We'll be talking about a range of topics from the foundations of health, like diet and exercise, to the more advanced new technologies like stem cell therapy and prolotherapy. So make sure to always comment and let me know how everything is. And if you have something that you'd like to learn more about, comment because then I can get a guest on who's an expert in that specialty or hey, I might even talk about it myself. All right, so what is naturopathic medicine? This is a question that I get most often and it's completely fair. And I don't want to be too redundant because my next episode is actually all about naturopathic medicine. And so today I'm just going to go into a little bit of detail, give you the key facts about naturopathic medicine. One, it's really just a, a distinct primary healthcare profession where we emphasize prevention, treatment, and optimal health. From there, we have six key principles. One, or the first one, is do no harm. This is a universal principle of medicine. Of course, our first priority is to ensure that no harm is done upon our patient. So in naturopathic medicine specifically, that may mean that at this time, pharmaceuticals and surgery are needed and we will refer accordingly. And our next principle is the healing power of nature. This means that we believe in the body's inherent ability to heal itself. This is really important because our bodies are so strong and so smart and have so many pathways that are already built in and we just need to support those pathways to help our body heal ourselves. The third is identify and treat the cause. This means we get to the underlying cause of what's going on instead of simply masking the symptoms with either medications or supplements. That is not what it's about. It's about getting to why you're dealing with what you're dealing with and how we can reverse that situation. The next is doctor is teacher. This is crucial. This means that we educate our patients on what exactly is happening in their bodies and why they're dealing with whatever they're dealing with I, and why we're recommending what we're recommending. I'm no joke. I will sit there and explain the mechanism of action of each of the herbs that I recommend to my patients because this is how important I think the doctor as teacher principle is. The next principle is to treat the whole person. This means that we see each individual uniquely. Every single person from our genetic to our environmental makeup is completely different, even for twins. I know, from, I know that from personal experience because my sisters are twins and I can tell you how different they are. And um, this is just something that I feel like is really important because we're looking at what you need, what diet works for you, because what works for you may not work for someone else, may not work for your neighbor, may not even work for your twin sister. So, um, the net, and then the last principle, but definitely not the least, is prevention. Prevention is the best form of medicine in my eyes, and that is exactly what the father of medicine, Hippocrates, said, was prevention is the best form of medicine. And so this is why we work to prevent disease in, in the first place. So for me, I will look at labs in a, in a somewhat different way. I will uh, see if you're even close to the pre-diabetes level, for example, then I will do my best to make sure that you never get to that point because I want to prevent you from ever getting that disease. And that is a huge part of what we do. So, so that's naturopathic medicine in a nutshell. Whatever I just mentioned here is actually all on the AANP or the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians website or naturopathic.org. So if you have any more questions or would like to explore what naturopathic medicine is and what naturopathic doctors actually do, then I would uh, suggest you go to that website and get all the information there. But like I said, my next episode my next episode is all about naturopathic medicine. So um, you also have that as a resource um, coming up. All right. So from there, 
Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about myself. The I, I want you to get to know a little bit more about me. That was all about naturopathic medicine, but what about Dr. Hanisha Patel? Who am I? So, like I said, I'm Dr. Hanisha Patel, and I am a licensed naturopathic physician. I received my degree from Bastyr University in California, and I studied pharmaceutical sciences at The Ohio State University before that. I believe I this is a question that I ask. So I want to get into a little bit more detail about what what my story is and how what brought me to naturopathic medicine in general. On this podcast, on this episode, I'm actually going to be answering the questions that I um, am going to be asking all of my guests. So I have a set few questions that I'll be asking every single one of my guests. And on this podcast, I want to answer those questions from my perspective and how I would answer them. So the first question is, what is your story? What brought you to naturopathic medicine? And I think this is a really important question because I believe that our stories are what make us who we are. It's why we are in the position that we are in today and how we got to where we are today. And so uh, with that, and I think that we all have a unique story to tell and each person's unique story can help inspire someone else. With that said, um, with that said that we have unique stories, you will see that a lot of my guests will have the same aha moment. We've all had a moment where like, oh yes, this is it. And so um, you'll see that as you go through and listen to my episodes. Um, but all right, let's get into it. What's my story? My story. I, like I said, I got my degree in pharmaceutical sciences at The Ohio State University. While I was there, I learned a lot about medications, of course, pharmaceuticals, and then the side effects of those pharmaceuticals, and then the pharmaceuticals needed for those side effects. That didn't really make sense to me. Uh, I felt like a continuous vicious cycle and that it never ended. I thought there had to be other ways of practicing medicine and, oh, backtracking a little bit. Uh, I had wanted to become a doctor since I was about five years old. So that was already in my path. Um, I had an amazing pediatrician as a child and I wanted to be the hero that he was to me. However, when I grew up, all these possibilities came up and I didn't know if that was the right path for me. And after I got my degree, I felt like something was missing. And then I had the opportunity to travel to Guatemala and India to learn more about their traditional medicines. And I saw that they worked. And that made me realize that, okay, there's more to medicine than pharmaceuticals. And I always knew nutrition uh, was a big part of health. And so I wanted to incorporate that. And while I was working my part-time job, I spoke to the optometrist that I was working with in uh, Columbus, Ohio at The Ohio State University. And after speaking to her, I told her about my passions. I was like, I want to incorporate nutrition and exercise and herbal medicine and more. I don't know what else, whatever else could be out there when working with patients, but I haven't found what I, what I feel like I'm searching for. And she had actually lived in Seattle where naturopathic medicine is abundant and she had a naturopathic doctor there. And she asked me if I had ever heard of naturopathic medicine. I said, no, what is that? And she was like, look into it. So I went home and I Googled it and I found those six key principles that I just spoke about and I felt a light bulb go off. I felt like, oh, this is my calling. Oh my God, this is it. I was like, I, I need to do this. I immediately applied. And um, as soon as I got in I, and did the interview in San Diego, I was like, I'm definitely moving to San Diego. Uh, and so then, and now I'm here today. And then um, during my journey, uh, this is also a really important part of wh- why I'm so passionate about naturopathic medicine now uh, is because during my journey in naturopathic medical school, I learned that I had Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. I was, I was seeing a naturopathic doctor then, and I was, had all the symptoms of naturopathic, um, or sorry, of Hashimoto's, and 
no one had ever been able to catch it before. Uh, I'd been dealing with back pain and constipation and abdominal pain, joint pain, fatigue, menstrual irregularities. I was, I was skipping my period often and I just didn't know why all these things were happening and why I was in so much pain and why I didn't feel good. And until I found out with, through my naturopathic doctor that I had Hashimoto's and that really helped direct my diet and lifestyle change and um, the supplements that I started to take and the, the teas that I started to drink and all these things that I started to do. And that led to me reversing all of my symptoms completely. And um, now I know what my triggers are and I really experience Mahan or great health. And this is why I'm so passionate about what I do. All right, so that was my story on naturopathic medicine. But I don't think that's all about me, so I feel like I should expl I, I feel like I should give you a few more fun facts about myself. Even though I do think that anything and everything could be naturopathic medicine, and um, all of these things I'm about to mention are probably all incorporated in naturopathic medicine as well, but I wanted to give you some more fun facts about me so you know, get to know me a little bit more. So the first fun fact is that I say we a lot. I grew up with three siblings where we shared everything and nothing was only mine. Um, I was the oldest, so I obviously had to share everything. And so I got used to saying we. So I bring this up because you'll probably see this in my podcast a few times when I say we did this or we're doing that. And really, I'm only talking about myself. Um, and this is a habit that I'm not really upset about. I'm okay with it. And um, I like the fact that I incorporate everyone. And so I'm kind of keeping this, this little habit of mine. So I wanted to mention that I do do that. Another fun fact about me is that I'm a dancer. I absolutely love dancing. I was a, the captain of my dance team in college at Ohio State. And I um, was so grateful to have danced with some of the best dancers in San Diego and LA when I was in medical school. And it was the coolest experience ever. And now I still dance in my room you know, for fun often, but I hope to start teaching again or just dancing again more um, in a more uh, studio sort of setting. Uh, another fun fact about me is that I love to travel. I really, really believe that um, traveling is what helps me learn that how much, how little I actually know. And I, there's so much to see in the world and there's so much beauty out there. and. I, um, I love seeing, I love being in the midst of nature. As you can see, if you're watching uh, me on YouTube, I'm right in the middle of like a forest, what it feels like. And I love being in this sort of environment and amongst other animals. Yesterday, I saw a beaver crossing this environment and it just made me so happy. And um, one of my favorite experiences was when I was in Tanzania and I was swimming in the middle of the ocean and wild dolphins surrounded me. Oh my gosh, that was the most amazing experience I've ever had. And of course, also on top of all those beautiful experiences with nature and other animals, I also love food. So trying all the, all the different foods from all the different cultures is such a fun experience for me. And um, it's one of the main reasons why I love to travel. Another fun fact about me is I love to watch sunsets. Sun gazing is a type of art, it's a type of meditation for me, and I uh, feel completely at peace when I do that. And I feel very grateful for each and every day that I'm here on this planet. Which brings me to my next fun fact, I'm really passionate about the environment and this planet. I um, believe that when we protect our Earth, our Earth protects us. and. Um, and so I do my best to be as sustainable as possible in terms of, you know, bringing my own containers to having the stainless steel straws and trying to shop more sustainable and whatever I can do to do my part. And then also in the end, that helps me as well. So those are some fun facts about me. And now you really, really know me. And now let's get to the, the rest of the questions that I normally would ask my, um, my guests. So the first question I ask is, what does Mahan health mean to you? So I already told you what Mahan health means. That means great health. And to me, Mahan health or great health means 
being able to live the life you desire, being able to fully live out your dreams, being having the, the ability in mind, body, and spirit to do what you really truly want. So whether that is being able to play with your grandchildren because you have the physical ability and the energy to do so, or if that's climbing Machu Picchu or becoming the ne next ninja warrior, or if it's something like being able to bear your own children, I think that we should all have the ability to live the life that we truly desire. And I think that Mahan Health is the way that we can do that. So to me, Mahan Health is being able to live the life you desire and being able to live out your dreams. Okay, the next question that I ask all of my guests is, what is what was the most difficult health change for you to make and what are you still working on? I ask this because I feel like a lot of times my patients and other people in, um, who are not naturopathic doctors or functional medical doctors, they see us and they think we have it all figured out. They see us on social media, they see us maybe in the clinic and it seems like we have it all figured out. But in reality, we're all still on our healing journeys just like you are. And so that's why I asked this question to bring, to bring you that awareness that you're not alone. Maybe some of the struggles that I'm dealing with, you're also dealing with, and hopefully that helps you go through this healing process. So for me, one of the most difficult health changes for me to make was to remove sugar. I was able to remove gluten and that was difficult, but definitely not as hard as sugar. And I would say that's definitely something I'm still working on because I will have times where I relapse and then I have to start my own protocol on getting rid of my sugar addiction. So it's definitely something that I have found most difficult and, um, and am still working on on the regular. Aside from the sugar addiction, um, I would say that's more of a physical thing that I'm working on, but also mental. Um, what I'm working on on a more emotional spiritual level is being able to let go that is the most difficult thing for me to do and what I've noticed is that like I mentioned in the beginning I love stories and I do think that our stories are what define us but sometimes I get really attached to these stories these stories um, and and so that makes it difficult for me to be able to let go of mostly people um, I tend to get more attached to people, not really materialistic things, but people. And whether this are, you know, old friends or ex-boyfriends or even my patients, I, I get very attached. And so my ability to let go is something that I'm continuously working on. And what I've been telling myself lately is that these stories Yes, they are what shape us and what form us, but we can change the direction of these stories. And these stories um, are, are simply chapters in my book, uh, the book about me and my life. And not every single person, not every single character needs to be in every chapter of my book. And that I think is what I'm really working on and really working on embodying that and embracing that so I'm able to let go of let go of these people who may no longer serve me, may no longer, I, I may no longer need them anymore, but I'm holding on to them. And so I'm trying to be able to let go. And that's definitely something that I'm working on. Another, okay, the last question that I ask all of my guests is the, if you could have a commercial about health, so like a public service announcement, what would it be about and why? And I ask this because I see so many junk food and pharmaceutical commercials and they're all promoting unhealthy lifestyles. And I thought to myself, well, okay, I wonder if I could have a commercial. How much would that cost? What would that be like? So I looked into it. It costs $150,000 to have a national commercial for 30 seconds on like, and that's the lowest lowest cost okay so that is if you're watching that show at 3 30 in the morning what no one's watching and that's when that commercial would air so $150,000 for that 
that terrible timing of a commercial. And I was like, who can afford that? Definitely not me, maybe one day, we'll see. Um, but right now I definitely cannot afford that. And um, so I thought to myself, what if we could have these commercials promoting health? How much would it change the dynamic of the healthcare system that we're in today or what people are dealing with today in our chronic disease sort of epidemic? How much would that change? I feel like it would make a drastic change and most people would be achieving Mahan Health at this point. So what would be the commercial that I would have? Well, my commercial would be all about the power of words. I am so passionate about this and um, I think that words impact us on a cellular, cellular level and it's really important to be mindful of the words that we're saying to ourselves and thinking to ourselves. Like Buddha said, what we think about, we bring about. So this commercial of mine would have this woman, she'd be walking through, let me paint this picture for you. She'd be walking through, she'd be talking about how frustrating the English language is because we embody our emotions. And she would say, I am not angry, I am not sad, I am not hungry, I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel hungry. These are temporary states of being and they do, they do not, I, I do not identify as them. And then, I'd have this man coming through the screen and he would be pouring a glass of water and on that glass it would there would be a sticky note that says disease then he would take that glass and then put it in another glass that says mahan health and then he would start drinking the water from the glass that says mahan health and he would say i'm achieving mahan health ask your naturopathic doctor if you can achieve mahan health too Side effects include thinking positively, a greater ability to cope, happiness, and just overall feeling better. <laughs> so that would be the commercial that I would have. Uh, and I hope you all enjoy that picture that I just painted. I feel like I live in a sort of fantasy world sometimes and I love that world at times because that that's, that's really what I think uh, we should be doing. But okay, so you know all about me now. What um, and what, how I would answer these questions. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey. All, all in all, really all I aspire to see is a, a world where Mahan Health is not only achievable, but the norm. I believe that it is achievable for all of us and I am so grateful for all of you to for joining me on my journey to achieving Mahan Health. And I hope by listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, you're able to get a little bit closer to achieving Mahan Health yourself. All right, wishing you all Mahan Health and happiness, and I'll see you next time.